So here's what we're going to have you do. See that video camera in the back of the room? You're going to imagine that's your partner. Yes. Yes. And on the count of three, now you have to wait till the count of three, but on the count of three, you're going to share with everybody here this evening your version of that look. Here we go, John. Now, you're all going to help him by counting to three for him. Let's count to three for him. One, One two, three. <laughs> Give it up for John. He did a great job. For way too many years, society ran with the message, no means no. The problem with that message is, it puts all the onus on the survivor. Everybody would react with, you know, if, did you say no? You know, if you didn't say no, and, and they put the, the responsibility on the wrong person. And what we're doing is we're saying, look, if you're going to touch someone sexually, you're going to engage in sexual activity, it's your responsibility to ask first. You're the one doing the touching. And in 1989, I received a phone call that my sister had been sexually assaulted, and I would soon feel the devastation. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. I saw what it did to my family, and I realized I don't want this to happen to anybody else. And then the strength of my sister inspired me to start speaking out, and that's where this all began. Hey, Mom, I see a note on the door. What's up? My mom asked me if I was sitting down. Suddenly you know something has gone wrong. wrong. And your brain starts preparing. Your brain starts to ask you questions in milliseconds like, what happened to an aunt or an uncle or a grandparent? And suddenly my mom says, Mike, um, Sherry's been raped. What? I'm hearing over the phone that my sister's just been raped. It's September 1989. I remember it like it was yesterday. Why? Because one thing, and only one thing, was going through my mind. It was a very simple and clear thought. I wanted him dead. If you think you'd feel the same way, yes, I would. Yes, I would. I know I was there. I felt the rage. I felt the anger. I thought what I was going to do when I got my hands around his neck. And then I had to take a breath. And over time, I'd have to look in the mirror and ask myself, do I really have a right to want this person dead after they've raped someone I care about? If I didn't do anything to stop someone just like them Friday night right in front of me before they raped someone. When it comes to consent, we teach people the precise how-to skills for asking before ever engaging in sexual intimacy. Makes it more fun, romantic, and respectful. You're doing the right thing. You're giving your partner a choice, and everybody deserves that choice. We're going to give you the microphone, and we are all going to count to three and watch this happen. Let's count to three. One, two, two three. So, how was that dinner? <laughs> it was tasty, yeah. Yeah. So, I was wondering, is it okay if I kiss you? All right, give it up, give it up. There we go. They did a great job. Was it a little awkward? Yes. Is a real date way more awkward? Yes. yes. And here's where it gets interesting. Even if it was awkward, if he's into her, does he care? No. No, is he going to do this? You asked? No way. Ruined it. <laughs> or is he going to do a little woo-hoo dance that this is about to happen? If you agree this is a woo-hoo, yeah, woo-hoo. Woo! -hoo. Yes. Why is this a woohoo? What about it makes us yell woohoo? Yes. Someone Yeah. Somebody who you somebody who you what? Who you want, right? Is attracted to. Right? You want, you're attracted to them, and they want to kiss you. This is a good thing. Yes, absolutely. See the coolest thing about asking first is it works. Whether the person says no, it worked. Because at least you didn't do something they didn't want done. And if the person says yes, of course you're going to love that moment. Here's a fact. When you want someone and they turn around and verbally tell you they want you back, that's hot. If you agree, if you agree, yeah. If you agree that's hot, yell hot. Hot. And when you want to kiss somebody and they turn around and say, may I kiss you, you get to verbally hear them tell you they want you. That's a turn on. Right? And if they say yes back, you know they want you. This is a total turn on.
By the way, if you just go for it, do you absolutely know they wanted it even while they're kissing you? No. No, you don't. You say that this program is fun and it's interactive. Right. How do you do that with a topic like sexual assault? Yeah. Well, here's what happened to me. When, when my sister was raped, I was in my dating ages. I was in college. So what it made me do was look at, all right, how do I get consent? And I started going, well, you know, who asked? So I went to other people and said, hey, do you ask before you kiss someone? You know, and everybody's like, no, I, I don't ask. <laughs> right. And I then, well, wait a second. If nobody's asking, what are we doing? Right. And you started to realize everybody's been raised in this culture of you assume. Yeah. You assume and you go for it in another person's body until they stop you. Well, when you say that out loud, that, that sounds messed up. Yeah. You're being given a choice before things happen. Is that normally how it works? No. No. Remember I said to this room, do you ask or you go for it? And I said, going, wait, wait, Mike. If I just go for it, my partner has a choice. They have a choice whether to stop me or not. That's not called a choice. That's called self-defense. <laughs> Think about how messed up that is. One person's going to sexually try to touch the other one until that person can physically or verbally stop them. That's the definition of going for it. When you hear that out loud, if you agree, that sounds a bit sick. Just say sick. sick. Sexual assault, sexual violence, rape impacts everybody of all genders. And so we at the Date Safe Project make it a priority to make sure everyone is included in all discussions. If we're speaking to an audience, we're gonna make sure it's incredibly inclusive so that everybody's part of the conversation. If we're creating materials, we want it to be inclusive so everybody's part of the conversation. That is critically important that everybody knows no matter where you're coming from, your background, your perspective, your beliefs, your orientation, your gender, you are part of this conversation and you're a valued part of this conversation.